So today I'm going to show you how to use silicone to do that. There's many different materials that you can use to create different kinds of molds for different kinds of castings. It really is dependent on the outcome of your project. I want to show you how to make silicone molds because they're very accessible. You'll be able to do this with any kind of material that you have and uh, they're very cheap. Okay. Okay, this is what your workstation should look like when you start to go about your silicone mold. When you start, you have to finish. There is no way you can complete the mold. You wanna make sure you have all of your materials. You wanna make sure you have a clean space. You wanna make sure your pattern is the way that you like it. I have my two patterns here. I also have soap. Dawn is the best. I highly recommend Dawn, 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 Dawn. And then our silicone. Okay, our silicone is a GE. It's clear silicone number one. Number one. If you do this in the future, you want to get number one. I also think like most often the cheapest silicone from the store normally is the best, ironically, for this. If you get a different kind of silicone, it might not cure. All right, this is a caulk gun. This is a caulk gun. Here is a trigger. You click it here to, I, to apply pressure to your caulk, your tube of caulk. All right, I'll talk a little bit more about this when I load the caulk into the caulk gun. Uh, you wanna pull it back here to get it ready. All right, and then lastly, I have my tub of cool water. The water is cool, so it doesn't mess with the chemicals of the silicone. I'm going to be using clean water. Ooh, there's a little dust in here. Um, you wanna make sure it's free of any plaster bits or anything else like that. So, let's see, the first thing I'm gonna do is put a bunch of soap in here. Put a bunch of soap in here. This helps speed the process of curing with the silicone. Okay, I'm gonna mix it around a little bit. Soap with silicone molds is our mold release. It's very important that you know that you have to have a mold release in most mold making so your mold making material doesn't stick to your object. So if I were taking a mold off of like maybe a piece of wood or something that wasn't oil based like the plasticine is, I would definitely want to use soap all over the surface of that object to ensure that it'll uh, release, the silicone will release. If you have sensitive skin, you should wear gloves for this process. I have nitrile gloves in the studio. You're not required to wear gloves. Um, I think that you wanna be really conscious of keeping your hands really soapy because the mold, the mold release also works on your hands so the silicone doesn't stick to your hands. Notice that I don't have any rings on. If you get silicone on your clothing, in your rings or jewelry, it might damage them, it might make them look weird or strip their surface of something, and it won't come out. Okay, so I soap in my water, I soap on my hands. I'm gonna actually soap up my, my doohickey. I'm gonna soap up both of them. I'm gonna do both of them today. Um, you might see online some other demos of this process. I couldn't find a good one, which is why I'm making one, of a three-dimensional object. A lot of people will just do a one-part mold. We're still doing a one-part mold because our silicone mold will be just one. We're going to make one impression of the whole thing all at once. But you can have, you, you might see mold makers make 13-part molds. 15 part molds, I don't know, very crazy. So I wanna put it like where it's gonna stay while it cures. Should I do it like this, should I do it like that? I think I'm gonna do it upright, because I don't, I wanna make sure I get all the detail possible. I don't wanna obscure any of the things I worked very hard to create. I know I'm going to be pouring my wax into the bottom of my pawn, into the bottom, so I know I don't need to worry about losing any detail on that surface. So that's why I'm putting that down. You want to keep that in mind when you're setting up to do this. I always suggest whatever you don't, whatever detail you don't need, or maybe the smoothest part of your object should be where you put it onto the counter. 
I need to put silicone around it at least a quarter of an inch thick, at most a half an inch thick. You're not gonna be able to tell how thick it is really. You don't want it to be, like so about a half an inch is about this much around my pawn, about, about this much around. I'm making a little like jacket for him. I don't want it to be any thicker because I have to cut through it later in the process. Like you see how this is cut and I'm opening it. I don't want it to be too thick because then it will break my castings. All right, so I have soapy hands. First, you have to cut this tip off. You have to cut this tip off. It's sealed. It's sealed. So you need to cut it off. You can do this right in your cock gun. Okay, now the tip is cut off. Now the tip is cut off. You can see that. It's in my little, where did it even go? Oh, I went in my soapy dish. Okay. Inside of here, there's a foil seal that you need to break. Otherwise, all of the caulk will come out the butt end. Okay. On your caulk gun, this down. There's a little pokey, just for this very reason. There's a little pokey. You see the little pokey? Pokey, pokey, pokey. You put the pokey through the hole, you pierce that, and you can see there's a little, maybe you can see, I'm not sure, there's a little silicone on my pokey. I put my pokey down like this. Ooh, maybe the other way. There we go. It's a little stiff because it's a new cock gun. Then you load the cock gun into the gun, the cock into the cock gun and you squeeze the trigger to create pressure that'll squeeze the cock out. All right, before you do this next step, make sure that your pattern, your pattern has been mold released. Make sure that you have extra soap right here, just that because your hands are gonna need to be re-soaked. Your hands are gonna need to be re-soaked. And then when you feel like you're totally ready, you start squeezing the cock into the water. I want to create maybe that much would be okay. And then you want to pull back a little bit on the end of the cock boop, 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 to release any pressure so it doesn't keep coming out the tip. I'm going to re-soap up my hands. You just can never be too careful. Okay, soapy, soapy, soapy. And then you're going to reach in and scoop up all that silicone. Okay, scoop up all that silicone. You don't want to put too much in here because you're going to just find that it'll be too much to handle in your hands. I'm going to stand up for this. So then you want to make a little patty cakes, little patty cakes until it's no longer like stringy. So it's a little stringy. So I'm going to keep working it in the water. I'm going to keep working it kind of like making patty cakes and then folding them over almost like I'm kneading bread. And I'm checking the bottom of this to make sure there's no silicone in it. You're working it in order to make it all nice and smooth and consistent. So it's not sticking necessarily in the same way it would. You have maybe five to 10 minutes of work time with your silicone. Okay, five to 10 minutes. So you have to work pretty assertively. All right, I have my first patty. Okay, you wanna make sure there's no air bubbles in it, especially on the surface that you're going to be putting onto your casting because you wanna, again, like I said, create as much detail as possible. Capture as much of your detail as possible. So here I go, I'm gonna go put this onto my casting and I'm going to smooth it, I'm going to smooth it around. It's okay if you can't cover your whole surface with one patty, okay, because I can't cover the whole surface of this pattern with one patty, maybe with this one, where I'm smoothing it, I'm tapping it, I'm pushing gently, but not too hard because I don't want to make it too thin. If I make it too thin, there might be holes and then the wax will just spurt out of your silicone. So you don't want to make it too thin. Silicone molds take 24 hours to cure. 24 hours, okay? You want to leave yourself more than 24 hours because what if you have to make your silicone mold again? All right, I'm gonna go in again with some more silicone. I'm gonna do this pretty quickly. I'm not gonna put in as much, so I only need to do one side, and I'm gonna show you how you can 
add a piece of, of like already worked silicone to a piece that's already on your casting. Um, I'm hoping that I got all that detail that I worked pretty hard to get. Um, all right, and you go about it again. You make, you gather all your silicone little stringies and you work them. You work them. Okay, here I am working it. This is, I think, the perfect amount. Um, I suggest working it under the water so it doesn't stick to your hands. You want to work it a little bit, work it a little bit. until it's consistent and not stringy or sticky. And again, I'm gonna make a patty in my hand that's about a quarter inch to a half an inch thick. Okay, and here I come, I'm gonna meet up, I'm gonna meet up with my other piece of silicone and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth it into the other piece of silicone. I'm gonna smooth it so there's no seam Okay, but I'm doing this very gently and I'm, again, I'm gonna make this look easy because I've done it a lot. It's not easy. You don't wanna over smooth this because it starts to peel off like that. This, I don't wanna use again. Boop. You cannot add any more silicone after it's cured. It won't work. So you have to do this all at once. Okay, I'm kinda tucking smoothing, tucking and smoothing. And then I'm gonna do the other one and fast forward so you can get another look at this process. You want no seams, no seams. You don't want air bubbles either. So if there's an air bubble on the surface of your pattern, you don't get that detail, okay? Casting is one of those things that make a lot more sense when you do it from start to finish. So this isn't making sense to you when you're watching this. Take a deep breath. Trust me, make your pattern, make your mold, and see it, see it, experience it. There's no learning like doing. All right, I've done some patty cakes. And I'm gonna leave it. Okay, you want it to be smooth. You want there to be no seams. You want it to be within five minutes. Um, all right, now I'm gonna do the other one. I'm gonna step up my hands. I'll do this one and fast forward on the video. Soapy hands. You wanna to work towards the open space so you don't have any big air bubbles. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do this all in one go. Okay, now I gotta walk away. There's nothing I can do. I gotta wait for uh, 24 hours until this can totally cure. Do not put anything that you're going to eat or any kind of body part into silicone. It will be bad for you. The smell of the silicone curing is very ammonia based. It smells like ammonia, it smells like straight cleaning fluid. So you wanna be sure that you don't put any chocolate into these molds, they're not food safe. Okay, you can order food safe silicone, this is not food safe silicone. Do not eat anything that comes out of here. All right, it's bad for you. Oh yeah, you wanna clean up. Okay, so now you're seeing my workstation with my cured silicone molds here. I haven't done anything to them. They're just sitting here. They've been curing overnight and a box cutter. Okay, so the box cutter is really, really important. It's how we're going to cut our patterns out of our mold and key them at the same time. So mold keying, like a key, like a door key, uh, is how we make sure that our molds go back together and open back up every time we use them. They key together. So it's like making a little key, like a key. So every time you open it around a casting to take it out, it wants to go back together, okay? Keying is really important. You wanna make sure that where you key your mold, you're not cutting into some really, really important detail. Um, some mold makers will put a layer of color here right against your mold so you know when you're cutting into it when you're about to hit your pattern. 
We didn't do that this time. Like I said, silicone molds are quick and dirty and easy. Um, with my box cutter, I want to ensure that I have a very sharp cut. So I'm going to put in a new blade, right? All right, so let's check it. Boop, boop, yay. All right, that took longer than it should have. Now I'm gonna consider my silicone mold and what I'm looking at is like, I did do a good job on my second patty um, on this one, on my more of like my square mold. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a keying that goes in a crisscross pattern, that goes in a, like a zigzag. So when I peel it apart, the stiffness of the silicone um, it's like flexible, but it still wants to be back in its little home. It'll give it a home to go back to. Do not, do not cut a straight line. The wax will come out. This is to help the wax stay in our silicone. Do not cut a, a straight line. I mean, if you're using wax or any other kind of material, it'll just pour out of your mold. So make sure that you use a zigzag and that you don't put your zigzag over where you remember having a lot of great detail on your pattern. So you wanna hold it, um, being careful, right, of hitting yourself with the blade. I'm just gonna go about like that. I've done one cut like this, and I wanna make sure that I'm all, all the way through. This is why we wanted it to be a quarter of an inch to a, to a half an inch. All right, so you can see my first cut. Here I come along, I'm gonna do my second cut in the opposite direction. So this is gonna create what's called a parting line, a parting line on your castings. And notice how I move my thumb out of the way of the blade. This blade is very, very sharp and it would just go So you wanna be very careful when you're, when you're working with this. Um, careful, not hesitant, but assertive. All right. Um, so yes, a parting line is where the two parts of the mold come together. And you'd be able to see this even in a plastic water bottle. They have parting lines. Anything that is cast in a mold um, normally has parting lines, even if they've been what I would call cleaned up or fettled. All right, so I made just one kind of row of zigzag, and it looks like my piece is coming out, so I'm not gonna do any more. I'm not gonna do any more, mostly because, ooh, you can see my leaf is still in there. I'm gonna try and take that out. I think I'll probably have a very nice impression of that leaf then. I'm seeing some detail in here you might or might not be able to see. I see my little, um, my little belly button in here, okay, like right there. I also see it over here. I see a little, my bloopy on the top of my pawn is down there. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty much like, okay, even if I didn't get a great amount of detail on this last side, I did a good job on my other sides. Yes, awesome. That's a thumbs up from above. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. And like, this is what a keying should look like. This is what the keying should look like. If I go all the way down here, I might rip my mold. You might have to do a little bit more, but you don't wanna go all the way around because you want it to come back together like this. So if there's nothing down here on this part of your mold to keep it like ha happy, um, it will be harder for you in the next step. Okay, trust your teacher. So I'll do it again on my other one, which is a little bit of a different shape, but I think I did a good job on this one. Look at how nice and, and snug the silicone is all the way around. Um, I think I'm gonna be okay on this one. I'm, I'm pretty excited. And I, as I recall, the detail was on the edge. So I'm just gonna go across the face of it here, and I'm probably going to do a smaller zigzag in order to keep my it's like a um, smaller because my, my pattern is smaller. All right, here I go again, just going for it. I'm gonna start there and you might see, oh, I didn't cut all the way through. So here I go, I'm gonna get into there a little bit tighter. Okay. And it came out. All right, I don't want to do any more. If it comes out, that means your castings will come out. I'm looking in here. I think I did a good job, right? And so I'm a little worried about this spot, like where the collar was. Um, maybe that'll be an undercut. But what I did was I have my keying running over that so there won't, it won't be trapped there because I'm going to key it and it'll pop out. All right, 
So here you go, this is where you should be when you head to make your castings. You should have your mold keyed, you should have your mold free of your plasticine. There might be a little plasticine gunk in here, that's okay, it'll come out in your first casting. And you probably wanna have the wax pot heating up about now.